بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله دي سورة سورة الهمزة it is a Meccan surah the name is الهمزة in the majority of the books of tafsir it was revealed after سورة القيامة and before Surah uh, Al-Mursalat and regarding the uh, reason of revelation there is no particular reason mentioned in the books of Tafsir <coughs> for this Surah Allah Azza wa Jal says وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةِ اللُّمَزَةِ وَيْل in English is translated as وُوتُ وُوتُ every scorner and mocker. Wail in Arabic can uh, take different meanings as per the scholars of tafsir. Uh, they said uh, it, uh, it is either a name for a valley and the fire of hell or it is uh, a sign of destruction, loss and misery for the person uh, or for the person who has the descriptions of whatever comes after that wail. Uh, Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen Rahmatullah said, it is an indication that <clears throat> the threat of punishment in the fire of hell is confirmed uh, regarding the person who has such qualities. Humaza and Lumaza. Humaza and Lumaza uh, is taken the form of fu'ala in the Arabic language this is used as a form indicating uh, excessiveness uh, in doing the, the thing whatever it is uh, and humaza and lumaza again scholars differed regarding the meaning of humaza and lumaza some said al huma is this person who, who talks ill uh, about people behind their back in other words, backbiting. Uh, and Lumaza is a person who uh, talks ill about people in their presence. Now, uh, you need to, to uh, be mindful of, uh, of one thing. A person who does that is usually, usually trying to cover up on, on a shortage he has, on a flaw he has. So he uh, takes the initiative of talking about the flaws of others to cover up for... So, for his own. Uh, other scholars said no, they both hold the same meaning. However, Sheikh Al Uthaymeen uh, has set a, a fundamental rule uh, to, when dealing with something like this. He said, when two words uh, appear in a religious text and we uh, can either take them to mean the same thing or give each of them a particular meaning on its own, then we will resort to the second meaning. If it has two different meanings or can take two different meanings, we will give it. He said, otherwise it will be useless redundance in the text, which is not befitting for a religious text. He said, and the authentic, the authentic meaning is that al humaza is a person who practically mocks people, making facial expressions, making signs to people, and he's short, he's fat, like this, right? So that uh, people may laugh at someone or whatever. Uh, and al lumaza is a person uh, who talks ill of people verbally, I mean, with his tongue. And Allah Azza wa Jal is, is mentioning two qualities here that make a person uh, deserving of wail. And notice we said it's, it's something that a person uh, excessively does. It's, uh, we're human. We will fall into something like this, you know, every once in a while or something like that, right? But this is talking about a person whose habit, whose character is like this. Uh, okay, you know so-and-so, yeah, yeah, that, uh, 
that, that guy who talks a lot, you know so-and-so, oh yeah, that sister, may Allah forgive her, she's this. This is just his character. He's always like that. He, he's always talking ill about others. Then Allah Azza wa Jal gives another dispraised quality. Who collects wealth and continuously counts it. The Prophet وسلم, and this is reported in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, um, gave a description of the nature of mankind. He said, if the son of Adam was given a valley of gold, you know, a valley between two mountains, imagine that being filled with gold. I personally wouldn't be able to guess how much that would be worth in, in, in dollars or pounds or euros or whatever, right? But it's going to be a lot of money, right? He said if, if the son of Adam was given a valley of gold, he would wish to have a second. Never satisfied, always keen on more. He said, وَلَنْ يَمْلَأَ فَاهُ إِلَّا التُّرَابِ and nothing will fill his mouth except the soil of his grave. Meaning, as Al-Munawi said when he explained this uh, narration, he said his keenness to collect and collect and collect more and more and more continues until he dies. And then the soil is all around him in his mouth and around his body. Allah so again, Allah Azza wa Jal is describing or giving another dispraised quality of a person who's misery, he's stingy, he collects money, he doesn't spend it. It's too dear to his heart to let it go. He doesn't spend it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's difficult on him when he's invited to give for the sake of Allah, he tries to find a billion plus one excuses not to. And he will at the end not spend. Addada. Now he collects. And then Addada counts. Now Addada is a form of something that's done repeatedly and excessively. Shaykh al Uthameen said he is so much in love with his money or his wealth. That he would go to his safe, for example, in the morning, would count the money, and then close the safe. And then in the afternoon, he would go and open it again, and recount the money, knowing that he didn't take anything out of it, and he didn't add anything to it. It's just that attachment to the wealth. And then he wouldn't spend. He would just count and work hard. Haram, halal, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for him. Someone who becomes so obsessed of collecting money wouldn't mind taking money from halal or haram. So this type of an obsessed person who finds joy collecting and counting his money uh, will develop and this is the, the, uh, the warning Allah Azza wa Jal is trying to give. He will eventually develop a sense or a quality of arrogance in him that will lead him to become, verse 1, humaza and lumaza. He would undermine people's dignity. He wouldn't mind anything, right? Because his, his attachment to his wealth develop that sense of the upper hand. I am rich. I have more. And not only that, he will become so obsessed with this wealth that يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَهُ He thinks that his wealth will make him immortal. <laughs> Subhanallah, Al-Izz ibn Abdi Salam said, 
explaining this and then I will, I will comment on it. He said that he would become so obsessed that he would think that this wealth is able to increase his lifespan or prevent death from afflicting him, protecting him against the angel of death. Uh, we spoke in, 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 a, in a different session about being enslaved to other than Allah. And that the uh, classical or traditional or face value of the, of the word abd, slave, uh, when it's said people have the, the, uh, the inclination or the tendency of imagining someone bowing down and prostrating to someone, someone or something. But in this case, he becomes so obsessed that he believes that this wealth is everything, can do absolutely anything. It becomes like a God for him who can protect him against death and protect him against the decrees of Allah, protect him against the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. When someone reaches that level, then khalas. He wouldn't care about any values, any principles, any ethics, any religious manners, any instructions. He would transgress all boundaries and all limits. And that's, he, that's why he is deserving of wail. Again, the connection between the verses to that very first uh, verse. Now Allah Azza wa is given a, a description of, of, a, of an evil character that will exist in every generation and in every community. You will find people like that. It's not something that Allah is describing about the time of the, the Prophet Wasallam. This is something due to the nature of mankind. If we don't control ourselves, we can be one of these. So Allah Azza wa Jalla is warning. These are warnings. Shaykh al Uthaymeen is say, saying regarding this. He said Allah Azza wa Jalla did not uh, list these qualities for us to recite them and understand the literal meaning of the words. And No. Allah Azza wa Jal is informing us of these dispraised qualities so that we can stay away from them. Control ourselves lest we become one such person who is described to be humaza, lumaza, eager and keen on, the, on this dunya, undermines people's dignity and honor and transgresses all limits because of his ugly obsession with this wealth and money and dunya. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Kalla No, he will surely be thrown in the crusher. Kalla is used to convey different meanings. Kalla means indeed, Surely he will be, indeed. And it's used to rebuck. And in here it's also used as an oath. Meaning, by Allah he will be thrown. Now, thrown scornfully is different than just being thrown. Being thrown in fire is a physical torture and punishment. By disdaining him in the way you throw him, you torture him emotionally and psychologically as well. So this is the punishment of his mental state of pride and arrogance. 
and talking ill about others. And this crusher, al hutama is another name of the fire of hell. It crushes everything that goes into it. Everything that's thrown into it would be crushed, would be tortured in different means. We ask Allah's protection against this. So the meaning of this verse is, no, it is not as this person thought that his wealth can make him live eternally and never die. He will die and he will be resurrected and he will be thrown and humiliated into the fire of hell to be crushed both physically and emotionally. And what can make you perceive what al hutama is? Again, this is an expression used in different verses and we've mentioned this in, in, in different surahs. This is just to deepen the, the, the sense of fear, the, the horror that overwhelms the person when he's reading about the punishment and fire and it's to deepen this Allah Azza wa Jal uses this rebucking form and rebucking question then Allah Azza wa Jal answers وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ وَمَا الْحُطَمَ what is this الْحُطَمَ نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُنْقَدَ then Allah Azza wa Jal starts giving description of this fire it is the fire of Allah, eternally fueled. The scholar said, attributing the fire to Allah, so that the person reading the verse would realize that it's not like any fire he's ever seen or experienced. It is a fire that's prepared by Allah, created by Allah, unlike the fire of this dunya. Narullah, al muqada eternally and intensely hot and fueled. Alati tattali'u ala al-afidah, which rages over the hearts, not the bodies. We went beyond that. Yani. Uh, this is a second description of, of the fire. Allah is listing descriptions of that fire whom he is threatened with. This humaza, lumaza who collects, right? He is threatened with a fire and the description of it, the first one is that it's eternally fueled. It's very intense in heat. And then the second one, it rages over the hearts. The heart is a very tender organ of the body. The least thing would make it suffer. So to expose it to fire, that is 70 multiples of the heat of the fire of this life. One can only imagine the type of torture. Though the heart is enclosed behind layers of flesh, skin and flesh and bones, and right? That fire is going to penetrate through everything and reach to his heart, the source of his arrogance. Now, and torture it with that intense fire. Indeed, it will be, meaning the fire will be closed down upon them. This is Mu'sada, is being closed down, which is a third description of the fire. They cannot escape. There is no relief, in other words. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal said in a different verse in the Qur'an, كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا أُعِيدُوا فِيهَا 
whenever they wish to leave, to go out of the fire, they would be brought back. Now, this, this verse, Allahumma ajarna minna, Allahumma ajarna minna. You know, being tortured is one thing, but given the hope of relief, and then discovering that this was a mirage, this was false, I will continue to be tortured, that adds insult to injury. That makes things bad. That worsens the situation. Shaykh al Uthaymeen said, Rahmatullah, they would be raised to believe, to make them believe that they're going to be relieved and then thrown back in it again to add to their agony and torture and pain. Fi amadin mumaddada, which is the fourth description of this fire in extended columns. These columns are either columns of fire, as the scholars said, or columns in the fire of hell, where the inmates of hell are being or will be chained. So, this is to say that fire is going to be from all directions, and you'll be they will be astaghfirullah they will be tied in a way that they can never escape they can never have that hope to escape out of that <coughs> out of that fire money is is going to be of no avail to the person. We mentioned the hadith that when you die, three things follow you to the grave and, and the gra to the grave and two come up, come back and one thing remains. The only thing that remains is one's deeds. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Yawma la yanfa'u malu wa la banun illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim. On a day, meaning the day of judgment, when one's wealth and offspring will be of no benefit, the only thing will be of benefit, he said, illa except for those who come with a sound heart, a heart that's filled with faith, filled with humbleness, not arrogance and pride, filled with the oneness of Allah, the Lordship of Allah, the divinity of Allah. Not that my wealth can do everything. A heart filled with hope in the mercy of Allah, as well as the balance of fear of the punishment of Allah. We ask Allah's mercy and forgiveness and pardon, and we ask Him to grant us the best end he has ever granted to any of his pious slaves, Allahumma ameen, and to admit us to the highest level and for those al-a'la of Jannah and our parents, wives, and offsprings, Allahumma ameen, wa akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa